Historical Society, and thank you all for coming to the, well, for zooming in to the virtual annual meeting of the Norwich Historical Society for 2021. Next slide. Regan is running these slides. Hang on, I'm working on it. <laughs> That's all right. Um, while she's pulling that up, we are a five, for those of you who don't know the Norwich Historical Society, um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have a volunteer board of directors and a fantastic executive director. Do you want to set me? Uh, Zoom is so much fun. Can people see Regan's slide or just, I, I'm just seeing faces. I'm just seeing you. Oh, now we're getting it. Oh, that's scary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we can see the slide and faces. That's ideal. Thank you, Regan. Um, and our mission statement is a very, very simple one to preserve, protect, and promote the rich history of Norwich. It's a simple mission statement. It's a really huge task. Norwich has incredible history going back 400 years with the Mohegan tribe all the way up to today. So uh, preserving, protecting, and promoting all of that rich history is very difficult. Um, all right, next slide, please. Yeah, Laura Hobart was on the board for a number of years. She had to step off the board this year. We appreciated her contributions. The current board of directors are Eric Beat, myself, Jane McCulloch, Dave O, Rich Pascal. Oh, I should be asking you guys who are board members to raise your hands as I mention your name or raise them now. Um, Joe Smith, Sandy. Lucy, Jessica Supley, Virginia Vallis, and Vivian Zoe, and our staff, Regan Minor, Executive Director. All right, next slide. The main thing that we do, and you'll hear about what the Norwich Historical Society has been up to and is going to be doing. Regan Minor is going to be giving a, a presentation after this very quick annual meeting. The main thing we do at the annual meeting is elect people to the board of directors. And the nominating committee has come up with a proposed slate for this coming year of five people. Three of them are currently on the board and would be coming back onto the board. Those three people are Dave Oat, Rich Pascal, and Vivian Zoe. And we're very pleased to have two new people joining our board, Miria Gray and Darrell Wilson. And I know that they're gonna be bringing an awful lot of good things to our organization. Um, and Virginia Vallis, uh, who we read is on the board, it has decided to step off as well. Um, are, that's the slate, Miria, Dave, Rich, Darrell, and Vivian, five people. Are there any nominations from the floor, in air quotes, or in the audience? Usually there are not, and I don't see anybody waving their hands madly. If not, I will ask the secretary to cast one ballot for the proposed slate of board of directors. Our secretary is late, but I will do so, <laughs> so okay. I'll be happy to. <laughs> okay, well, it's being recorded, so she will do it. And here's Darrell right now joining us. And I see also we've got Kevin Ryan and Mark Betancourt, some local important political people. All right. That's basically the end of the annual meeting. Um, I would like to close it and then I would like to get started with our presentation, which I think you're gonna find very interesting. 
Darrell, you just got elected to the board. Thank you, sir. And Miria, you as well. Thank you. So I'm going to introduce Regan because she deserves an introduction for those of you who don't know her. She's a native of Norwich and a current resident of Norwich. She received her bachelor's degree in history from UConn and holds a master's degree in public history from Central Connecticut State University. She's responsible for everything, but I'll list some of the things. Overseeing all administrative duties, fundraising efforts, capital projects, and coordinating all the programs. And she does more than that. She does everything. In addition to her position at Norwich Historical Society, Regan serves as the chairman of the Norwich Historic District Commission, and she's a recent board member of Preservation Connecticut, the uh, statewide nonprofit preservation organization. We are proud that Regan was the recipient of the 2016 40 Under 40 Award, the 2016 Connecticut Governor's Conference on Tourism Rising Star Award and the 2018 Mimi Finlay Award for Young Preservationists. Regan, it's you. Thank you, Bill. Yes. Thank you for the introduction. Appreciate it. Let me just see if I can advance my slides here. I don't know why you seem to be having some trouble. Hang on, everybody. Regan, are you running on saying on the one monitor? I am. I, <laughs> I only have one monitor. Yeah. Uh, you might uh, so you could bring uh, PowerPoint to the front over the Zoom, then uh, then you might be able to run it as normal and just hit spacebar or whatever to advance the slides. But it's got to be the controlling uh, app for you to be able to run it when you're sharing the screen. And let me try. Um, sorry, guys. Let me just try this one more time. I guess Zoom wants to stay to the forefront, at least part of it does, even when it's sharing. Uh, let me just, can everybody see this again? Hopefully, I just will have to. All right, this looks good. All right, sorry guys, I'm hoping to not have too many issues. I apologize. Um, um, so, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Regan Miner, and I'm the Executive Director of the Norwich Historical Society. Thank you for joining us. I'm pleased to be here to tell you all about what the Historical Society was up to in 2021, excuse me, in 2020, and what we're going to be doing in 2021. Um, but to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge, in the spirit of truth and equity, it is with gratitude and humility that we pay tribute to the Mohegan tribe the original stewards of the land where the city of Norwich now stands. Norwich can trace its origins to the year 1659 when Chief Uncas gave a gift of nine miles square of his native homeland to the immigrant people surrounding him. The Norwich Historical Society recognizes the town's debt to that landmark event of centuries ago and acknowledges the encroachments which resulted in the eventual disposition of the tribe's land. The descendants of Uncas continue to live and work beside us in the present and will be among us in the generations that follow. We now work towards greater awareness of the inequities of history, most especially the destruction of the tribe's burying grounds, which resulted in the establishment of a memorial grove dedicated in 2008. As we move forward to the future, let us not forget the past so that we can build an inclusive and equitable location for all those who come to occupy what we solely, what was once solely native land. Sorry, everybody, I seem to still have difficulties with this PowerPoint. Um, Mark, what were you saying again? <laughs> this is my first time doing this, so I apologize, everybody. Yeah, you, it's got to be right at, it's got to be at the forefront. It's got to be the controlling app. So uh, 
PowerPoint does in order to advance the slides. Zoom tends to want to be there. So if you get it in there and then you get the mouse in the window and keep it there, then uh, you, hopefully you'll be able to advance the slides, but uh, otherwise you're going to have to keep on doing what you've been doing. I know. Sorry, everybody. Hang on. So, Can you use your space bar to advance the slides? Space bar or the mouse, either one. But, but uh, it's got to be the controlling uh, app. PowerPoint has to be in order to advance it. Once you share it, then you got to make sure it's in there. Let me go just... back and click on anything in Zoom then. So you're saying Zoom in front, Mark. All right, let me, oh, sorry, everybody. Zoom in back. Zoom in PowerPoint back. Front. Yeah, PowerPoint in front. But shrink both windows, keep both windows in the you know, smaller format on the screen and keep that one out front. So that would do. Okay, one moment. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um. Regan, would it be helpful if Thanks. you got rid of all the pictures of us? People? No, hang on. I think I'm figuring it out. It you was just it? difficult because um, I can't minimize since I'm recording. So can everybody see that now? Yes. All right. Let's. Good. All right. I think I figured it out, everybody. Sorry. Thank you for bearing with me. This is awful in this world of Zoom. You think we'd figure it out by now. Um, so sorry about that, everybody. Um, so I just wanted to run by the numbers of our 2020-2021 revenue. Um, as you can see, we receive most of our funding through private, state, and federal grants. And I'll mention some of those funders later in the presentation. Um, we couldn't do what we do without our members um, donating to our annual appeal, local businesses giving us contributions and benefactor income. And we also really appreciate um, any earned income we receive via events and other programming income. So thank you to our members for contributing in memberships and annual appeal donations local businesses, and also um, some of our grants that I'll mention later on in the presentation. I'd just like to take a moment now to um, acknowledge the passing of our friend and former board member, Jason Vincent. Um, the Norwich Historical Society was shocked and devastated to hear of the passing of, of Jason earlier, uh, or end of 2020. Um, Jason served on our board for many years, and he had such a passion for telling the city of Norwich's stories. He was instrumental in building a robust Walktober program in Norwich and laid the groundwork for many projects such as the Norwich Heritage and Regional Visitor Center and the Walk Norwich Trail System. Jason was an integral member of the Uncas Leap Steering Committee and he was passionate about turning the site into a heritage park for residents and visitors, and, and visitors to enjoy. Jason was a firm believer in partnerships and played a key role in getting all of the Norwich Heritage Groups to collaborate with each other. He was a problem solver, a big thinker, and had a can-do attitude that inspired everyone. Jason's profound loss will be felt for many years to come. He was truly a champion for Norwich. Jason was a colleague, mentor, and friend to everyone at NHS. We'd like to extend our deepest condolences and sympathies to Jason's friends and family. The Norwich Historical Society will do our best to honor his legacy and move the projects that he cared about forward. So despite the global pandemic, the Norwich Historical Society was able to accomplish many things in 2020. I'd like to give a brief snapshot of all that we accomplished in this past year and give you a preview of 2021. NHS helped secure a buyer to save the circa 1659 Peace Calkins house from demolition. The Peace Calkins House is one of the few houses remaining in Norwich with connections to the original European settlers of the town. The house may date to the late 17th to early 18th century and is located at the western boundary of the original town plot. The Calkins Family Association bought the property and is excited to preserve an important architectural landmark in Norwich 
which has strong connections to their family heritage and Norwich's rich history. I'm excited to announce that the Calkins Family Association just received their nonprofit status so they can start doing much needed restoration work on the building. If you'd like to support the Calkins Family Association in these efforts, please visit their website. The ongoing global pandemic did not prevent our important preservation work on the circa 1772 Joseph Carpenter Silversmith Shop and the circa 1763 David Greenleaf House. The ongoing restoration of these properties is a part of a larger partnership formed, by, formed with the Society of the Founders of Norwich and the Norwich Historical Society to improve upon existing heritage tourism sites in Norwich. This past year, the Carpenter Shop received a host of improvements including a new cedar roof. We repaired the chimney using an 18th century mortar recipe. We, we repaired the fieldstone foundation, installed a new period style bulkhead, added a French drain and new gutters were installed to mitigate drainage issues. Windows and clapboards were repaired and painted and a new energy efficient heating and cooling system was installed. In early 2021, a new handicapped accessible bathroom was completed using materials salvaged from an 18th century farmhouse slated for demolition in Montville, Connecticut. Our phase one preservation work on the David A. Greenleaf House is also ongoing. This past summer saw the clearing of the property of brush and an archeological survey was performed by the state archeologist and the Mohegan Tribes Tribal Historic Preservation Officer to prepare for future site work. Further, the fall saw the building painted and the windows repaired or replaced with custom wood windows. There will be more exciting updates to announce regarding this project this year. 2020 was a difficult year for many and the North Historical Society joined many other organizations in pivoting our programming to a virtual platform. NHS was fortunate to receive support from Chelsea Groton Bank and partner with the Last Green Valley to create virtual tours of our popular walking tours. All of our virtual experiences are on our Norwich Historical Society and Walk Norwich websites. NHS was fortunate to partner with the Lafayette Trail to host a Zoom lecture on Lafayette's 1824 visit to Norwich. Further, the Norwich Historical Society partnered with Otis Library and Norwich Free Academy to give distance learning presentations on local history to Norwich students. In honor of Connecticut Freedom Trail Month in September of 2020, the Norwich Historical Society and the City of Norwich marked this momentous occasion by commemorating the addition of the Ellis Walter Ruley Memorial Park on the Connecticut Freedom Trail. The Connecticut Freedom Trail recognizes sites significant to the state's African American history and culture. In 2015, the Norwich City Council authorized the creation of the Ellis Walter Ruley Committee and appointed Lottie B. Scott, Sheila Hayes, and Frank Manfredi to the committee, which was responsible for developing informational narratives for on-site viewing and for the express purpose of making 28 Hammond Avenue a place for tourists, residents, and aspiring artists to visit and learn about Ellis Walter Ruley, who was an African-American self-taught artist. The Ellis Walter Ruley Memorial Park was designed by Robert Groner and dedicated on July 27, 2018. The park is set on 3.5 acres, has a paved courtyard with fountain and gardens, a rebuilt well, and narrative text panels detailing Ellis Walter Ruley's life and art, and history of the property, and the murder of Douglas Harris in the well. The ceremony was recorded and is available for viewing on our website. And I encourage everyone, if you have not been to the park, please do so. As I mentioned, it's located at 28 Hammond Avenue here in Norwich. It's quite beautiful. So and everyone takes a drive out and, and enjoys the park. The pandemic significantly delayed the installation of our Walk Norwich signs. The Historical Society partnered with the City of Norwich Public Works Department to install our interpretive and wayfinding signage for the Freedom Trail and Millionaire's Triangle Trail. All of the signs are finally installed and can be enjoyed by all. I'd like to give a big thank you again to Public Works for helping us with this project. They've been great champions of Walk Norwich and we're so appreciative of all their help. In 2021, we have many exciting plans and opportunities in store. Recently, the Norwich Historical Society formed a partnership with the owner of the circa 1750 Dye Manning House with the goal of restoring yet another historic structure in the Norwich Town Historic District to be open to the public. NHS secured a survey and planning grant from the State Historic Preservation Office 
to conduct a conditions assessment of the building. The conditions assessment will help NHS identify any major issues with the building, prioritize our rehabilitation plans, and set the groundwork for developing a full-scale preservation plan. In addition, the Norwich Historical Society has formed an equity committee to make sure our organization is more diverse, equitable, and inclusive to all. We'll have more updates on this to share soon. We are continuing our partnership with the Norwich Public School System and the Norwich branch of the NAACP to create distance learning materials and lesson plans for Norwich's eighth grade students based on the story of James L. Smith, who escaped slavery on the Underground Railroad and created a new life for himself in Norwich in the years before the Civil War. We're grateful to Connecticut Communities for funding this project. In addition, NHS is creating professional virtual tours of the Norwich Freedom Trail and the Millionaire's Triangle Trail. We're grateful to the Lord Foundation and the Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition for funding this project. In 2021, NHS will continue our virtual winter lecture series which is being held from January through April in 2021. We're in the middle of the lecture series at this point. Our next lecture is scheduled to be held on Thursday, March 25th at three o'clock. If you've missed any of the lectures, they're all available on demand on our website. If, you, if you're interested in attending um, Thursday's lecture, you can register by going to our website. Further, the Norwich Historical Society will continue our ongoing rehabilitation projects at the 1763 David Greenleaf House, the 1789 East District Schoolhouse, and the 1783 Dr. Daniel Schoolhouse this year. Lastly, we will plan to create, a, NHS will plan to create a, excuse me, sorry, NHS will create a plan to build the identity of Norwich as a heritage tourism destination. More updates on that soon. NHS couldn't do what we do without the support from our generous sponsors. A few are listed here, but I will read them aloud as well. We're grateful to the LCA Brown Fund, Connecticut Humanities, the State Historic Preservation Office, Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition, Norwich Public Utilities, the 1772 Foundation, Chamber of Commerce of Eastern Connecticut, Chelsea Groton Bank, the Last Green Valley, and the Edward and Mary Lord Foundation. We also couldn't do what we do without our wonderful group of volunteers, all of these photos were pre-COVID, so don't, don't be too concerned here, um, but we're grateful to our board members, our Walktober and Second Saturday walk leaders, and our volunteers during events. Thank you all very, very much for all your help. So I wanted to just share some exciting upcoming events with everyone. So I mentioned earlier, um, on Thursday, we will have our next, um, our third lecture in our virtual winter lecture series program. It will be on Emma Baker. Um, Christine DeLucia, Assistant Professor of History at Williams College, and Melissa Tandrikwich and Zobel, Tribal Historian and Minister Woman of the Mohegan Tribe, will be the presenters. I've had the privilege of um, doing some Zoom calls with the two of them to prepare for this lecture, and I think it's going to be really great. Um, I'm really excited. Um, they're both so incredibly knowledgeable about Emma Baker and the time period that she represents, um, so I encourage everyone to attend if you can. Our last lecture in our um, four-part virtual lecture series will be in April. It will be held on April 22nd at three o'clock. And this will be on the um, Gilded Age here in Norwich. All of our virtual tours at this point have tried to um, encompass topics from our four Walk Norwich trails. So this will be our last lecture and it will be on the Gilded Age in Norwich. And we're very excited that um, the former director of education and the former director of Museum Affairs for Preservation Society of Newport County will be our featured speaker. So hopefully everyone can join us for that presentation in April. And again, if you wanna register for Thursday's lecture or um, April's lecture, just please visit our website and all the information is right under our events page. Come on. <laughs> Oops, there we go. Um, the other event that we have coming up is um, we're going to be hosting a virtual trivia fundraiser on Friday, May 14th at seven o'clock. Um, we will have more details about this exciting event coming soon. So please uh, stay tuned for more and check out our website for more information. We're always looking for people to get involved in our organization. 
So there's multiple ways to get involved. You can become a member, you can become a sponsor, or become a volunteer. And if you'd like more information, please visit our website and um, shoot me an email or give me a call and I'd be happy to talk more about the organization and how you can get involved. Our contact information is here. So um, I look forward to continuing the discussion with all of you. And um, hopefully you can visit our website and visit walknorwich.org to check out all of these self-guided walking tours. Um, now that the weather is getting nicer, it's the perfect opportunity to um, go out and explore Norwich by checking out walknorwich.org. And so that is all I have for everybody. Um, at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions um, regarding topics covered in the presentation. And I can stop sharing so we can all see faces, which will be fun. So let's do that. There we go. Thank you all so much. Thanks for bearing with me during my tech issues. I apologize. <laughs> That's exciting stuff, Regan. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. We, the Historical Society is very fortunate to have Regan working with us. I've been involved with the Historical Society for quite some time. We got started in 2001, but I came on the board, I think, five or six years later. And uh, we were doing some interesting things back then, mainly uh, newsletters. Since Regan has been on board, we're getting an awful lot of good stuff done. So thank you. Does anybody have any questions having uh, covering anything that Regan was talking about? Faye. Are there, um, what, are you, what are your plans about uh, the visitor center? <laughs> Good question, yes. I know we've spoken at length at various board meetings to decide what we're doing. Um, regarding in-person or virtual or you know what we plan on doing for opening the visitor center in general. Um, at this point, we're still going to kind of hold tight and see how things roll out with the governor. Um, one thing that we could do is potentially open the visitor center in the fall for October. Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking, that uh, if things aren't okay by October, we'd have a lot more than the visitor center to worry about. Correct, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, we, we unfortunately had to keep the visitor center closed this past year um, for um, safety of our volunteers, but I'm um, hoping to examine that this coming year and also hoping to re-examine um, in-person programs and in-person guided walking tours. So stay tuned. We'll keep everyone posted. <laughs> this could be a really short meeting if uh, and and I'm I'm not surprised that nobody has questions. That's fine or comments. I would like to thank you all for joining our Zoom. And I'm looking. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm looking out a window, and it looks really nice. Um, unless there's anything else, I'm going to end the meeting. And thank you all very much for attending. Yes, thank you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Regan. Thank you, Bill. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Good Thanks to see you all. all. That's the one I was looking at.